What's known at this stage is that he's had a collision with another car, mounted the curb, and crashed. Most of his injuries from the crash itself came from blocks. It appears blocks went through the windshield. He suffered very severe lacerations of the scalp and also a very severe open depressed fracture of the skull with fragments of bone actually going in and lacerating the surface of the brain. We can see that fire cut them, cut them out. And this is a normal thing they do instead of trying to, they're in such a rush to save him. At this time, we're literally cleaning out the bone pieces and uh, we're removing uh, areas of brain that are not survivable, that are uh, irreversibly damaged. And then what we'll try to do is to cover over the surface of the brain with the dura or the membrane that normally covers it. If we can't close the patient's own membrane, what we'll do is we'll take a piece of cadaver membrane and close it over as, as a graft. And that'll hopefully reduce the risk of infection. He might have lost control over there, but he must have been breaking from out there. Yeah. As the surgeons attempt to save Andrew Goff's life, crash investigators from the Metro Dade Police Department soon discover that this was no ordinary collision. I saw all these cars getting out of the way. There was like pandemonium behind me. And I saw the little red car coming up. And he was swerving in and out of traffic trying to avoid the cars. Was he speeding? He was going at least, I would say, around 100. And he said, well, you know, is he crazy or something? And then he just kept, like, avoiding all the cars and going through from one lane. We were in the third lane here. And he went to this lane, then he went to the next lane, then he came back. And we thought he was going to crash for sure. But my husband said, he's going to kill somebody. There's lots of hard evidence that the car was traveling at high speed and out of control, swerving in and out of traffic, hitting the curb, seemingly unable to stop. But why? Okay. Yeah, it, it, he... I can't... I really can't see where he's come up anywhere, but... No. This could be the initial hit, coming up on this side. Over a mile from where the car eventually crashed. If they can find out where the accident started, they may be able to work out why. Looks flat here. Oh, yeah, yeah. He also has contusions or bruises of the brain on the opposite side. And when we have injuries such as this, where both sides of the brain are injured, the prognosis for a good recovery really plummets quite a bit. And his chances for a good recovery are extremely small. See right yep. here? He blows right here. fire right here. Yeah, that's new. Yeah, brand new. Yes, sir. Whenever you can scrape the concrete off or the rubber, then yeah, it's, see that? it's fresh. It's brand see new. That? See that rubber right there? So if he's, he's come on and off the curb, all the way down the road, we may walk back right another here. mile. Look at They're losing the battle at the hospital. But back at the scene, the detectives think they may have the answer. It, it looks like, it looks like, like he's probably had a seizure. Or it's got the earmarks. How, how, how old is our I don't know. We need to find out. That's what we need to find out. Uh, I have that feeling, that gut feeling. He, he's driving down the road and he had some sort of a, a, a physical seizure and uh, just continued on because it's obvious he was bouncing off curve and mounting the curve on and off, on and off. White male in his 40s. In his 40s? Well, that's prime time for heart. our man. The neighbor said that he has no visitors, no next to him. Yeah. It happened right near his house, too. A paper bag found in the car appears to prove their theory. It contains medication. Do you know what type of medication this is? Uh, that is medication given for seizure disorders. The crash detectives have had a success, but Andrew Goff never regained consciousness and died of his brain injuries 12 days later. The investigation of real-world crashes has led to some startling statistics as to where and why we are likely to die in a road traffic accident. 
For instance, in the United States, the thing most likely to kill you is a tree. 19-year-old Chris Morris of Glen Burnie, Maryland, almost became a statistic himself when his Mustang hit a tree at this spot early one morning in a spectacular crash that left more questions than it answered. It's just one of those bad days. I should have stayed in bed. <laughs> Senior crash detective Doug Davis has been called in. He highlights the telltale clues. But his investigation reveals a discrepancy. Just who is telling the truth? Because of the lack of residual scene evidence, it would have to be estimated that the young man lost control of the vehicle just before the break in the double yellow line. From the time I lost traction to the time I hit the tree, it was, couldn't have been more than two or three seconds. I didn't really have time to think. Lose control, and y'all left. Yawn left, he comes straight. I knew whatever I was going to do wasn't going to stop it from any, what was going to happen was going to happen. Overcorrects, the car begins a right side leading slide. I pretty much just let go of everything and let it flow after I lost control. Comes across the driveway, left wheel and the right wheel, and the front of his front door impacts the tree. Just before I hit the tree, I blacked out. That was the last thing I remember, and I woke up in the trunk. But the tree caused him to become airborne his front facing this way, he rotated counterclockwise in the air. And the vehicle landed at this point. I woke up in the trunk and sat there for what seemed to me about a half hour. It's probably actually five to ten minutes at the most. I didn't hurt anybody or anything. I had no idea where I was. Uh, so I crawled out of the car. As I crawled out of the car, I could see the woman that had called the ambulance. And she looked like she had seen a ghost, or uh, couldn't believe she had seen me crawling out of the car. On the inside of the car, as the car hit the tree and this side intruded, the front seat has been folded more than in half. The brake and the clutch pedal and the accelerator are hidden behind this. Quite fortunate that he didn't have his feet entrapped or that this didn't roll over on his feet and uh, break bones or amputate. It would appear that he was projected to the right and rearward and his head would have been somewhere possibly in this area. We have a blood mark right here. There's a small blood mark right here. Only thing that was going through my mind was uh, I was happy to be alive. It would appear from the inspection of the seatbelt that he was not wearing his seatbelt at the time of the crash. When a person wears a seatbelt, we find scratches where the seatbelt is going into the uh, latch plate. Uh, this, I would say, it probably hasn't been buckled more than 10 or 20 times in its life. I don't know why I didn't wear my seatbelt. I, I just woke up, didn't even get a shower. I was in my car uh, five minutes after I woke up. Uh, we also look for melting. When it tightens up, it runs very quickly past this plastic. We find melted pieces at the edge. Uh, this belt was not worn during the crash. In the detective's reconstruction, Chris Morris was traveling north along the road when the crash occurred. You know, there's really no reason for this kid to have lost control of this car. There's no defects in the road. It would appear to me that he might have been downshifting. Behind us is a double curve and a hill. And the young man lives in this neighborhood. He knows the road. And it would seem that he probably was slowing down or, or preparing to come through this curve and through lack of experience, he just lost control of the car as he downshifted. 